Hello everyone, my name's Leah, also known as Wellness Medic. I am a fourth year medical student from the University of Sheffield. For today's video, I'm finally doing the long-awaited Q&A that I have been putting off and putting off and now I've finally got the time to just sit down and go through some questions and hopefully you can get to know me a little bit better. So as always, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and if you want to stick around and see more, then please do press the subscribe button down below. Anyway, let's get on with the video. I asked you guys on Instagram, which is Wellness Medic, what you would guys would like to know, and I wrote them down on a piece of paper and we're gonna go through them now. First question, I think I've already answered it, is where are you studying? So I'm studying at the University of Sheffield, and like I said, I'm in my fourth year, and Sheffield was actually my firm choice, so I was really lucky to get accepted in Sheffield. Um, I actually, I remember, I didn't think I was going to pick Sheffield right up until I literally put it down as my firm choice. It was one of the things I was really umming and ahhing between two universities and the other university I just remember I reached out to that university in Sheffield I uh, had a question about being a WP student and I just remember the other university didn't really give me much kind of help or guidance whereas Sheffield actually got in contact with me and put me in contact with a current medical student at Sheffield who was also a WP student and I got to actually sit and talk to her like obviously I emailed her we had a video call and it was just really nice and I felt really kind of supported and looked after and that just kind of cemented Sheffield for me and I'm really happy that I picked it. The next question is what is the best thing about medicine? And I love this because I don't really think there is one thing I'd say is the best thing about medicine. I think there are so many amazing things that I get to do which I'm privileged enough to be able to do in a medical degree that I just absolutely adore. I think obviously you can't beat that. That patient interaction means so much to me. And I always say the best thing for me about medicine is actually the non-medicine part. Just being able to have that relationship with the patients and you're helping them through probably one of the toughest times they may face, the most vulnerable moments of their lives. And it's usually those moments where you just have a couple of seconds to chat and check in on them, or maybe you check if they need a cup of tea or you check if they want to call their family or even just little things just making sure they're okay and getting that little bit of patient interaction time and hopefully being able to help them and especially with something as important as health health is such a important topic it's a very vulnerable topic for a lot of people so being able to be involved in that is just a massive privilege and i love medicine for that i've just always loved science i've always loved biology i've always loved learning about the wonders of the human body so being able to use that to learn that knowledge to use it and then apply it to patients and to hopefully helping them is just a massive honor and that's why i absolutely love medicine what was your worst day on placement now i'm not actually sure i can disclose my worst day on placement um because i don't know what i can and can't say but basically it involved some not very nice words being said about me and my wp background which was by someone in a superior position to me that was obviously a very horrible day on placement for me and it was a really difficult but also I wouldn't change it I wouldn't change it because I learned a lot about myself in the sense that I learned how to stand up for myself and I learned that actually no one can tell me I'm not good enough apart from me and even when I say it it doesn't count and if I believe in myself it doesn't matter who else who does and doesn't and I think that's a message everyone can take away as long as you believe in yourself that's all you need you don't need people with anybody no matter who they are telling you you're not good enough because it's only you that needs to feel that you're good enough and that's all that matters but that's probably my worst day on placement I think to say I always say to students like, you're not always gonna have the best day ever on placement you're gonna have days where you come back and think why did I choose this degree why did I choose I think that's with any job why did I choose this why am I doing this why am I putting myself through this I think it doesn't help with the current state of the NHS and the pay and just there's so many factors I could go into but I think you get the good days and you get the bad days and for me the good days have definitely outweighed the bad days the next question was what do you want to do after medical school so I definitely want to do my juniors um I definitely want to become a junior doctor I'm not sure if I want to work full time or if I would look at doing less than full time on an 80% contract, um, which obviously sucks because the pay isn't too good, but you have to think mental health versus pay. And I know I need to put my mental health first to get the pay. So 
I think I would definitely want to do that and then afterwards I, at the moment my top speciality choice is psychiatry um, it was GP for the longest time it, it was GP for about three years and then I slowly the more I learnt about GP the more I learnt that I was really interested in mental health and then the more frustrated I got when I realised that I only had 10 minutes to talk to these patients and actually I'd love to talk about mental health for as long as possible and the more I learnt about that then I finally got to go on placement in psychiatry and I just absolutely fell in love with the profession and it's something which I think I'm really passionate about so that is my dream profession I'd love to go into psychiatry I'm not 100% sure what area the psychiatry yet because to be honest I've loved every single area I've seen so far so I definitely want to learn more about that and do as many different areas of psychiatry as possible before I settle down. Another area I do like the thought of is public health. So maybe do something similar to that on the side, but I'm not sure I'd want to do it full time. Just also like things like this, public speaking, um, working more, out, doing things outside of medicine as well are really cool. But like dream speciality, I guess, would be working as a psychiatrist and hopefully making people feel a little bit heard, more heard question was who do you live with and I thought that was a bit odd but then I was like you know what it is a kind of I guess not as a scene area in the sense that I don't live with flatmates I live with my partner who's actually my fiance we live together we've been living together now for just over a year it's been going great which is really nice and before that I lived with flatmates I've really enjoyed it I've really enjoyed living with Josh I think it's really nice to I feel like now I finally got home when I come home um I feel like I finally got this place where I can fully relax and that's fully mine and that it just feels like home. It's a different feeling. It feels like I'm coming home now, which is really nice and it, it helps me relax a lot more when I come back from placement. But it's me and Josh and we're very happy and yeah, it's great. The next question was how many animals do you have? So I don't have like loads of animals. I have two animals. I had Ralph, who I think is a bit infamous, on my Instagram because I'm always posting about him, showing pictures. Um, he means a lot to me in so many ways. Uh, Ralph is my one-year-old ragdoll and he is just incredible. I think people don't realise how much animals can help you in so many ways. And to me, I got Ralph when I was during my leave of absence from medicine and I was in quite a low place with my mental health. And Ralph was the best decision I ever made. He just having him there and having him around, having him cozy up to me, it, it was just the best. It did so much for my mental health. It really gave me more of a purpose, especially during my leave. I love him to pieces. And then about, it really wasn't that long ago now, like a month, it wasn't long ago, we decided to extend the family and we got Nico and Nico is our little little baby he's only about four months and he is a Maine Coon cross ragdoll so he will hopefully be a big boy like Ralph as well and we got Nico because we were worried about obviously as a med student and doctor you work a lot of hours and my partner Josh he works as a school teacher so he works a lot of hours too and I just hated for because Ralph is a house cat and I hate to support him being alone all the time. We eventually we came to the decision that we'd like to get him a friend and it was the best decision we ever made. He is just, he is, and he's, Ralph is like a new cat. They do everything together. They play together. They groom each other. Ooh. They play together. <laughs> they groom each other. They look after each other and they are just so happy together. So yeah, only two animals and no thoughts of extending at this present time. <laughs> the next question is, have you ever not wanted to do medicine? And yes, the short answer, yes. Um, a few times before medical school, during medical school, and hopefully not after medical school. So definitely those two. Before medicine, I had the doubts. Was I good enough? Um, was I clever enough? Was I worthy? How was I gonna cope because of mental illness? To be honest, the exact same when I was at medical school. Am I good enough? Am I intelligent enough? Um, am I going to be good enough because due to mental illness? And on top of that, I think was the the pay. Obviously, I think a lot of people see about the pay restoration at the moment. Hours are very long, and that's quite daunting. I've always had a doctor medicine to consume me, and that is something I worry about in the future when things get more intense. And yeah, there's just a lot of negatives to medicine. But for me, at the moment, the positives are definitely outweighing the negatives. But I do not blame people who make the decision to leave medicine. I think it's not, I see some people be like, oh, well, you should just finish the degree, you should just finish, blah, blah. 
Um, I think until you're actually in this position, you can't really appreciate what these people are going through and the way these people are thinking. So yeah, I definitely have considered leaving medicine a few times. Um, and if I was to leave medicine, you know, that's okay. And if people want to leave medicine, that is absolutely okay. You have to do what's best for you. As much as this career means the world to me, myself and my mental health should always mean more. So I do not blame people one minute who may not make that decision to leave medicine. And I've definitely considered it myself, but at the moment we're in a very good place for medicine. So hopefully that stays. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? I would probably live here. I don't know, <laughs> really boring, but um, I, I like being, my family is very important to me and I like being able to be able to see them when I want to. Obviously Sheffield is a few hours away from home to me, but it's still obviously achievable. But I guess if that wasn't a factor I was taking into consideration, it'd probably be somewhere like, I don't know, a small little Greek village or a little village in France or in Italy or just something like that. Like a small little village in Europe that's warm. And I have a pool and I work part time and I just finish in the afternoon and have a glass of wine by the pool. Like, you can see the picture. I think everyone thinks like that. But yeah, if I could live anywhere in the world at the moment, I'm very happy where I am. For the random one, but I feel like maybe because I post my food a lot. Someone asked if I'm a vegetarian. So I'm not a vegetarian. I don't really, there's not really a name for it, I guess. So I don't eat anything that comes from a cow or a pig. So any beef, pork. Um, I haven't eaten beef in about two years and I've not eaten pork in about a year and a half. I don't, it might, might even be more than two years now, you know, two, no, two years. Maybe beef two years and um, pork a year and a half and I occasionally still eat chicken and I eat fish. So I'd say I'm predominantly pescatarian, but we still eat chicken every now and again. What music do I listen to? Well, that really does depend. So I love 90s music, 90s boy band music, 2000s music, Queen. Queen's like one of my favorite bands. Love a whole range. I wouldn't say I have a particular genre. I think I'll, I'll listen to anything. But if I'm studying, my study music, jazz. I listen to jazz music all the time. When I'm doing Anki and stuff, I will always listen to jazz music. Actually saying that, I've got into this weird no obsession with Animal Crossing music. I'll put an Animal Crossing playlist on. I just think it's relaxing, you know, so yeah, I have. If I'm revising in the morning, it's happy jazz and literally on Spotify, happy jazz, you'll find, or coffee shop jazz is a good one. And the afternoon it'll be some like relaxing jazz or calming jazz, study jazz, anything jazz music, just give it a try because I promise it, it makes me more productive. What is your favourite study tool? So my favourite study tool has actually changed really recently and oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, I used to hate this, Anki. Anki is my favourite study tool and I'll tell you why. I love that it tells you exactly how much to do a day. It works it all out for you, it's so easy. It is not the prettiest, it is, it is not pretty, but it gets the job done and I've definitely found that it's worked really well for me and I would definitely recommend Anki now, but it takes some time. So if you're just starting out with Anki, like keep going. If it really doesn't work out, um, fair enough, but like give it a try because I've really enjoyed it um, and I will do a video at some point exactly how I study because Anki and then different resources like zero to finals zero to finals is a lifesaver anki zero to finals um past med quest med all of that but yeah anki is my favorite at the moment i think the next one's quite sweet and the next one's my biggest achievement so i'd say i have a few big achievements that i'm proud of one of them is being a pet owner which i know it sounds a bit sad to some people but I was really, I get really anxious about change and getting Ralph was a big achievement for me because I was very nervous and it was obviously the best decision. I think the biggest one at the moment when I think of it, the first thing that comes to my head is obviously going back to med school after my leave of absence because I was really nervous. I was still unsure about if I was good enough. I didn't obviously know anyone because I'd gone to a new year and I was really unsure about if I'd made the right decision, but I pushed through and I'm really proud of myself for doing that and also just as proud of the fact that I took the leave in the first place because that was a really hard decision and I didn't know where my life was going at that point and if I'd be going back to medicine 100% or if where my life was going but I took that leave anyway and I looked after myself and I worked on my mental health and I came back and that's a really big achievement for me that I even though I wasn't sure 100% if it would work out I still gave it a go and I'm still here now and I'm very proud of that. My most embarrassing moment is the next question. <laughs> I have too many to count guys. I've had embarrassing moments on placement where I've just mind blanked on the most obvious answers to questions. 
I've had silly moments where my brain's just sometimes like when I was about 12 this is one I can't remember really saying this when I was about 12 I was at the cinema and I wanted to go to the toilet and instead of going to the toilets my brain thought the toilets was the fire exit and I got stuck in the fire exit and then I was literally just walking up and down in the fire exit shouting help me help me because <laughs> I was clearly stuck uh, moral of the story is I had to go all the way down these little fire exit stairs and it took me out to some random car park didn't know where I was and found a nice lady to take me back to the cinema <laughs> So yeah, I think I'm definitely, I have some moments where I just think, Leah, what on earth was going through your head? I think you just get used to it and you know, embarrassing moments are something you can laugh about later on in life, so there's always a, there's always a positive. That was definitely, that, that's one I'm not proud of. The last question that I've got here is, how would you describe your dream life? I think my dream life would be just having complete happiness in the sense that I was doing something with my degree that I love, that I go to work every day happy, that I have people around me that I can trust and that make me feel good about myself and I can fuel that back into them. I would love to be able to continue expressing my opinions, whether it's through, hopefully through social media still, but also, like I said, public speaking, speaking more my story and encouraging others, working with schools and especially uh, state schools and WP students and hopefully setting up something to help them achieve their goals and get into medical school. Be able to go to bed at night feeling happy and accomplished and looking forward to the next day. And if I can do that, then that is why that I'm happy. That would make me happy somewhere not too busy maybe in the countryside very relaxed way of living and that would be just perfect i think i don't have that many like this is what i want this is my absolute dream as well like and all these very exaggerated things for me it just comes down to am i happy will i be waking up happy and going to bed happy and if i can get all that then i'm a very happy person <laughs> thank you so much for watching that was just a little get to know me so hopefully you guys can know a little bit more about my life both inside and outside of medicine if you did like this video i'd really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe down below and i will see you next sunday for a new video